Hello and welcome back to the 2021 World Cancer Leaders Summit. Now, for those of you who have just joined us and perhaps have missed some of the really fascinating discussions that we've already had, just a reminder that within a few hours, all the content will be available on demand on the summit platform. Now, I've been joined here in our Geneva studio by Dr. Elizabeth Weiderpass, who is director of the International Agency for Research on Cancer, and that's based in Lyon in France. Uh, so, Dr. Weiderpass, welcome to you. Thank you so much for being with us in the studio today. We really appreciate it. And today I know you're going to be talking about the role of research in innovating for change and more particularly the importance of uh, continued investment in that research. So I hand over to you now. Thank you, Anna. So dear participants, colleagues and friends, I'm Dr. Elisabeth Vederpas, the director of the International Agency for Research on Cancer or IARC. IARC is the specialized cancer research agency of the World Health Organization, WHO, within the United Nations system, and we are located in Lyon, France. Our mission is to promote international cooperation in research on cancer prevention. IARC has collaborators in more than 140 countries around the world. It's a great privilege to talk at the World Cancer Leaders Summit. Today, I will give a talk about the global cancer burden and progress and innovations in cancer prevention to ensure that underserved populations can also benefit from prevention programs and assess quality services. First of all, I would like to thank the team composed of colleagues and collaborators from UICC, IAEA, WHO and IARC who shaped the agenda and invited me to give this presentation. I will begin with an overview of the global cancer burden. IARC data on the global cancer burden indicate that by 2040, if the trend continues, there will be 30 million new cancer cases and 16 million cancer-related deaths worldwide. These figures are alarming. So we need to act now. It's a fact that the cancer burden is far from equitable. We know that low- and middle-income countries with 70% of all cancer deaths, bear a larger burden of cancer mortality than high-income countries. The biggest increases in the number of new cancers in relative terms is predicted to occur in countries with the lowest human development index values. A 400% increase is predicted by 2040. This is because access to early, accurate diagnosis and quality care are lacking. A slower rise is predicted in countries with very high human development index value, about 50%. Another fact is that the growing cancer burden will have especially harsh consequences for women in low- and middle-income countries due to gender discrimination, stigma and cultural taboos. A woman who develops breast cancer in the US or UK has an 85 to 90 percent chance of survival. In comparison, in many low-income countries, a woman's chance of survival may be as low as 10 to 25 percent. That's unacceptable. The likelihood of a woman surviving cancer should not depend on where a woman lives. There are many reasons for the inequities we see in cancer burden. They include lack of funding for cancer research, inadequate data to better understand and respond to trends in cancer incidence, lack of cancer prevention strategies, not having access to the latest treatments and high-quality cancer care, oncology workforce shortages, and late-stage presentation of the disease. I will now give you three examples of key levers in public health that can be used to improve cancer prevention and control and therefore reduce cancer inequities in low- and middle-income countries. The first lever is investment in public health surveillance systems. The WHO defines public health surveillance as the continuous, systematic collection, analysis and interpretation of health-related data needed for the planning, implementation and evaluation of public health practice. An example of this is a population-based cancer registry. Registries collect 
all reportable cancer occurrences from multiple sources in a defined area, capturing population-based disease burden and informing strategies for cancer control. Without accurate population-level data and the systems required to collect and organize the data, low- and middle-income countries are severely disadvantaged when setting priorities for cancer control. In simple terms, cancer data is required to be able to make the best cancer control decisions. IARC's Global Initiative for Cancer Registry Development supports crucial capacity building in low- and middle-income countries. Low- and middle-income countries need further investment and coordination with stakeholders to optimize population-based cancer registries as a tool for identifying cancer disparities. The second lever is championing cancer prevention through cancer control coalitions and international joint programs. This can help to change the disproportionate impact of cancer in the poorest countries. International cooperation and cancer control coalitions are wide-reaching and can inform population-level cancer prevention activities, such as raising awareness about cancer prevention, supporting population-based cancer registries, and generating multi-sector approaches for outreach to populations. The third lever is investment in implementation research. There are a number of low-cost, high-impact interventions that can help low- and middle-income countries prevent and treat cancer, reducing inequalities. Indeed, 40% of all cancers are preventable. IARC scientists predict that tobacco smoking, alcohol consumption, unhealthy diets, overweight and obesity, and infection with certain types of high-risk human papillomavirus, or HPV, will be the biggest contributors to the future cancer burden. Tobacco smoking will remain the foremost preventable cause of cancer. As data and evidence for the benefits of cancer prevention continue to accumulate in high-income countries, the crucial next step for all stakeholders will be outline a sound knowledge transfer strategy. A plan is needed to inform evidence-based policy to ensure that the target outcomes are met. The effective implementation of knowledge transfer strategies in low- and middle-income countries will reduce inequalities in the cancer burden. This is the role of IARC in driving innovation in cancer prevention in low- and middle-income countries. A concrete example is our work on cervical cancer. The global burden of cervical cancer for both incidence and mortality has substantially declined over the past decades. Unfortunately, exceptions to this positive trend have been reported by several European countries and in the majority of sub-Saharan Africa. National rates vary markedly between countries. This can be partially explained by differences in the prevalence of high-risk HPV strains and by disparate access to and coverage of national screening programs. This inequality has driven the launch of the WHO Global Strategy to accelerate the elimination of cervical cancer by scaling up prevention, screening, and treatment programs. IARC supports the WHO Global Initiative by providing an implementation research evidence base for HPV vaccination, screening programs, and treatment of cervical precancers in low- and middle-income countries. IARC is coordinating a multi-center study in India of 17,000 female vaccinated with one, two, or three doses of quadrivalent HPV vaccine. Long-term follow-up has shown that a single dose is as protective as two or three doses against persistent HPV infections. This is an important innovation in the vaccination of young girls in low- and middle-income countries who cannot afford three or four visits to the primary health care center. IARC also innovates in cancer treatment. For example, in Zambia, IARC researchers have developed and evaluated 
an affordable and simple technology to treat cervical precancers. This new device, called thermal ablation, avoids many of the practical disadvantages of cryotherapy and is preferred by healthcare providers and produces minimal complications or discomfort. The successful preliminary findings of the study we are carrying on have been informed the recent WHO thermal ablation guidelines. IARC is also supporting the development and evaluation of promising new cervical imaging technologies for low- and middle-income countries. This includes a device that uses high-quality images and artificial intelligence, or AI, to give a colposcopic diagnosis. Training the AI-based personnel on more images obtaining colposcopy clinics in India and Thailand is underway to improve its accuracy and wider application in different settings and locations. IARC is also developing a new AI-based algorithm to detect HPV in urine using infrared spectroscopy. Another illustration of IARC's innovation is our work on breast cancer. IARC is supporting the implementation of a multi-level, multi-component intervention strategy, including telepathology, a low-cost portable breast ultrasound device, and novel strategies, such as molecular and histopathological diagnosis from cell blocks to reduce access and diagnostic delays and improve the quality of diagnostic services for patients with breast cancer in India and Uganda. In conclusion, innovation in research can and should be used to close the inequity gap rather than increase it. My vision is for a world where fewer people develop cancer and where progress in cancer prevention benefits everyone. Thank you for your attention. I, I would be happy to answer your questions, if any. Back to you, Hannah. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. And there are some questions indeed from the, the audience as well. So I'm going to get straight to it because time is against us. Uh, first question, how can education and training programs keep up with innovation? Innovation in and of itself on its own is, is not enough, right, unless there's a, a tangible result. Absolutely. I think it's very important to connect the dots between very practical problems and research, mm -hmm. because it's only in the field, when you, when you live with patients and you observe their challenges, is really where you can get new ideas to solve practical problems, in particular in cancer prevention. Uh, another question, how do you ensure commitment from policymakers to actually finance the research in a sustainable manner as well? It's a one. <laughs> major, major challenge. Yeah. One way that we are trying to, to do is to prove the economical case for cancer prevention and to decrease incidence in the first place. So doing research in health economics applied to cancer prevention is one solution. Okay. Um, what do you see as major barriers to collaborative research for, for vulnerable people, vulnerable populations? I think one of the challenges is the way research is supported is, is because groups are put in a way competing with each other for meager research funds. Mm -hmm. So when, when the community supporting cancer research economically changes its mindset, I think in communication and collaboration will increase. And it's interesting you mentioned um, collaboration there because uh, th another question that we've got is how do you see research, research institutions collaborating in a better way in order to ensure that innovations are actually accessible to a, to a wider group? Yes, I think one concept is the concept of, of working with challenges. Mm -hmm. I mean, once you define a challenge and then different groups of researchers with different backgrounds work together to sort out that very practical challenge. This is what we call now, and we are developing this with the European Commission, missions. For example, we have developed the European Cancer Mission, mm -hmm. and we have identified several challenges that the communities should work together to accomplish. Dr. Elisabeth Weiderpass, it's been an absolute joy to have you uh, in the studio. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for all the stats and the data as well. It's really important to sort of gain a, a broader picture of, what the, of what's going on at the moment. Thank you very much Thank for your you. time.